now's the time to find out whether the new ITG air filter will flow any more air than the crappy standard paper one. Hello guys and welcome to this Volks Wizard video. Now I've had my Golf GTI TCR for around three months now. I've been on holiday in it, I've done a track day in it, I've been commuting in it pretty much every day. I think I've done about 5,000 miles in it. But one thing I haven't done is make any modifications to it, which I know is a bit unusual for a car on YouTube, but we're gonna put that right today and we're gonna do the first modification you should do to any car, and that's to replace the standard paper air filter element with a free flow one, like this one from ITG, who you've probably seen on this channel before. So this is made of sponge, it's very lightly oiled. It's a straightforward replacement for the original paper one. The reason for doing it is because the original paper one is quite restrictive. It's a very cheap part designed to be chucked in the bin. These are a bit better flowing when it comes to air going into the engine, which gives you a better throttle response. It doesn't make it any more powerful, plus they're reusable. So an original filter is probably a third of the price of this, but this will last indefinitely. You just re-oil it and reuse it. Now, I want to do a before and after test measuring the air going into the engine and then I'll show you exactly what it takes to fit this to your car. It's very easy and the fitting process applies to every EA 888 car. So Golf R, Audi S3, 8V, any Mark 7 GTI, and of course, say Leon Cupra. So without any further ado, let's get testing this Golf GTI TCR. Okay, we're on the road then in the TCR. We've got the standard paper air filter element fitted. I've got my laptop running VCDS diagnostic software here. We're going to log the engine speed, the gear, the air mass requested by the ECU and the actual air mass. That's probably the key figure there. So that's the actual air going into the engine. Air mass, not sure if you can see that. We're going to do it in manual mode, which I'll explain about in a sec. We're going to do it in normal mode. We're going to use manual mode because I want to do the test really in fourth gear. So we'll get it up to fourth quite quickly um, and then we'll give it full throttle into fourth and let's see how much air gets into the engine because in fourth there's a lot of boost happening okay i think we're good to go so let's just check everything's working yep all right let's get out onto this road oh press start <laughs> easily forgotten okay so we're in manual mode up to fourth okay so let's let the torque do the work now hopefully it won't shift up for us Okay, so I think we've got some good data there. Now it's time to fit the ITG filter element and do that all over again. Okay, so we've done the test with the original air filter element and logged the data from that. I should point out that before doing that, I took the original filter out, gave it a good clean. It's only done 7,000 miles. It's, it's good for 40,000 miles, according to Volkswagen, at least, I think. But I took it out, gave it a good shake, gave it a good back. So I'm pretty sure it's representative of a good original filter. Now it's time to fit the ITG one. Now, what I should point out is these are not very oily at all. They are oiled, that's designed to trap the dirt, but it's not like some of the ones you see where the oil is actually dripping off it because that can cause problems with the electronics. That was a big deal with Mark IV Golf and the MAF sensors if you fitted a K and N. A lot of that trouble was caused by people over oiling these when they were cleaning them. But this out of the box is really dry. It's sticky, but it's not dripping with oil. So yeah, I'm quite happy to fit that to my car. The good news is, it's very easy to do this. All you need is a T25 Torx driver. That is it. So let's have a go. So firstly, you have to pull this vacuum pipe off the front left-hand corner. And then there are just eight screws. And luckily they're quite captive, so they won't fall out and get lost on your under tray, which if you've ever done that before, you'll know that is rather annoying. It'd be doubly annoying here because I can't lift the car up and get the tray off very easily. Okay, I think that's seven and eight. Some cars have got very easy air filters. Some are really, really hard to do, like Mark V Golf GTI is a really hard one, but this is so easy. 
So there's the paper element. As I said, I took it out and cleaned it. There's nothing in there. I also vacuumed out the air box because debris gets caught in there. If you're going to change an air filter, whether it's to fit a performance one or to fit a standard one, you need to get the debris out of the air box, which really is only easy to do when you've got a vacuum cleaner. OK, let's fit the ITG one. So it's the same footprint. It's just not as deep. And there we go. That's it. Just make sure it fits within the frame of the base. And then do up your eight screws. And don't forget the vacuum pipe front left. And that is it. Can it be any easier? Right, well, now's the time to find out whether the new ITG air filter will flow any more air than the crappy standard paper one. OK, we're back where we were before with the standard fills, but now we've got the ITG one fitted. I've got my laptop connected as before and yeah, I'm ready to go, so let's get this done with manual mode again, normal mode, try and keep it in fourth, hopefully it'll kick down like it did before, so let's get going, so that's into second, third, and then fourth, so let's squeeze the throttle, just tip it into kick down, no, it didn't this time, so yeah, a big load of air in the car's lungs then in fourth gear so yeah that should be a nice bit of data there there's still going to be enough comparison data because there was enough time in fourth gear before we had to stick to the 60 mile an hour speed limit anyway right let's go back and crunch some numbers now thank you guys well welcome to andy's garage it's a little bit smaller than harry's but it does the job and it's actually quite nice to film in because it's quite bright and it's quite secluded now, I've got my nerd glasses on because I've been crunching the numbers and it's quite interesting. I think with the R8, when I did this a few months ago, there wasn't really an awful lot of difference with the ITGs fitted, but this is the turbo car, so it's a very different proposition. I've plotted the data here. I'm going to show you in a sec. I just want to say I've only taken a very small sample and that was basically a run through fourth gear from about 2000 RPM to about 5000 because that took out the change down, the kick down the car did with the standard filter. So we've got a nice sort of longish run through fourth on both filters to look at. So here we have the air intake, the math flow, and the RPMs up to just under four and a half thousand, all in fourth gear. Blue one is stock and brown one is ITG. Now initially, the stock one was flowing a bit more, but at just under 3,000 RPM, when the car really picks up its skirts, the ITG one sort of takes over. There's a sort of funny lull here, I'm not sure what's going on there, but at the higher revs, the ITG's got a big improvement over the standard one. So yeah, I think that's pretty conclusive, especially at the top end, which I guess is where you really need the improvements so yeah I can't talk about drivability because it's going to be so subtle I don't want to bullshit you and tell you that it's brilliant when it really doesn't feel any different to me but I'm pretty sure it's not going to feel any worse and as I said before the filter is reusable so if there's only one benefit to fitting a free flow filter is that you can use it over and over again anyway guys I hope you've enjoyed this Volks Wizard video if you have please give it a thumbs up please comment please share Please, please do subscribe and I'll see you for the next one, hopefully very soon.